Hello friends, welcome back to another year in the Bible video. I'm to the book of Daniel. I'm going to do, last video I did three books of the Bible. Today I'm going to do one book of the Bible, um, and then I'm going to do a bunch of them. I'll tell you about more, more about that at the end, but um, book of Daniel, a book that I am, this is a really fun one for me because a book that I, I feel really familiar with, like in some basic ways. Like what, what I mean by that is you know, I think of the book of Daniel, and I think Daniel in the lion's den. I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. I think about Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the big statue. You know, um, I jokingly, like, I was a little too old for this, but I remember when the Veggie Tales videos came out, and I believe it was the Daniel, they had the, the bunny. The bunny. Oh, I love the bunny. <laughs> um, so I have all of these thoughts about Daniel, but then I, I also know that there's like this back half of Daniel that is full of a lot of weird visions and dreams and monsters and stuff that I don't really fully wrap my head around. So I think when I think about Daniel, I think about those, those kind of Sunday school, vacation Bible school stories. And I was excited to read through it this time and, and to dig a little bit deeper. And so I did my read through, and then I did what I've talked about several times in this video series where I went and kind of consulted with the Bible Project and some Bible dictionaries and some commentaries to try to wrap my mind a little bit more around the book of Daniel. I think I read this, it's 12 chapters, it's, it's like two, two sittings. I, I took a few more than my three-page limit and just kind of powered through it in those two sections. But really it feels like part one is kind of chapter one through six. Part two is chapter seven through 12. You have a lot of really familiar stuff and then kind of those those weird visions and things at the end. And so I wanted to kind of like make my way through it. I made some notes here. Um, by the way, shout out to, real quick before I dive in, to Kat Woods, another Bible reviewer here on YouTube. She commented on my last video where I talked about traveling with my Bible. Um, and she's like, you should make a travel journal in your Bible. And I had not thought to do that. It's so cool to like write down. I think I wrote in one space, I wrote like I'm on a train somewhere right now, but I didn't like really keep track of it. And I thought about that because I literally just got home from a trip to Washington, D.C. to the Museum of the Bible for the Bible Craftsmanship Conference, which I'm getting, I'm going to release a video next week where I talk about that trip and getting to hang out with Mark Bertrand from Bible Design Blog and Klaus from 2K Denmark and more about what they're, they're doing with the Society for Bible Craftsmanship. But I, I traveled with my Bible again, so I've now traveled with it several times this year, and it's it's got a little wear, wear and tear, but it's it's doing really well. It's lays really flat. It's easy to read. So anyway... Um, shout out to Kat and all those people, but Book of Daniel. So some of the things I noticed, I knew I knew going into reading this that Daniel is one of the books in the Old Testament that is not completely um, written in Hebrew, that there's actually some sections of Aramaic in it. What I didn't know, what I learned from, from studying a little bit up on this, you obviously can't tell this from reading it in English, but um, chapters 2 through 7 are actually the Aramaic parts. I thought it was all the stuff at the end, but it's actually two through seven. And then when you think about two through seven, it has this weird symmetry, right? Like in two and seven are, are the dreams. You have Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the big statue in two. Then you have uh, Daniel's dream with um, the, the, the beast and the son of man and all that stuff in chapter seven. So those kind of sync up. In the middle, in three and six, you have uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and then in, in, in three, and then in six, you have Daniel in the lion's den. And then in four and five, you have the two kings kind of prompt, propping themselves up in all of their pride and their arrogance, and Daniel warning them, and them ignoring him, and then bad stuff happens, right? And so it's this this symmetry in those sections, right, of, of the Aramaic thing, which I think is just a beautiful nod to the fact that so much of the Old Testament is brilliantly written and constructed in beautiful ways. And sometimes we, we just don't see that in our English Bibles. We don't catch it. And so you have to dig a little bit deeper. You have to pull out one of those study Bibles or those commentaries to really start to, to understand the beauty of it. I talked about this with Lamentations, like the, the all the chapters and the symmetry that there is. There's just some really beautiful writing, particularly in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, and it's easy to miss that when you're just powering through your Bible and the year plan in English. So I, I loved that aspect of it. It kind of sets it apart and it has this symmetry to kind of highlight, and what I think is just the importance of those key moments and the way they're kind of telling this story. Now, chapter 1 then, and then chapters uh, 8 through 12 are the, are the parts of the book that are in Hebrew, so they kind of stand off that way. I, I do think, as I read it back, it really does feel like at the end of chapter 6, you're kind of like finishing this this first story with the, 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 the vacation Bible school parts, and then it kind of turns into Daniel's dreams and this kind of 
prophetic, apocalyptic looking to the future and all of these beasts and stuff like that. And I really wanted to like wrap my mind around what's going on. And I have to confess that one of the things, there's just so much symbolism, right? I wanted to be able to answer it all. Kind of like when I read the book of Revelation, I'm like, I'm going to conquer it. And every time I do that with Revelation, I come back going, I have more questions than I have answers, Um, which is a beautiful thing about the Bible and about following Jesus and being a Christian is that we we tend to continue to develop more and more questions, which I think is a good thing. There's that A.W. Tozer line from the knowledge of the Holy, which is God incomprehensible. Like once we think we've fully understood God, we we have to know we're wrong because there's going to be more and more. And so I love that it brings up more questions. I confess that my attempt to like conquer the book of Daniel um, was in vain because I found a lot of different ideas from commentary writers. I found a lot of different notes in study Bibles that it was like, here's some ideas about what this is about, about which kingdom this represents. And we and we do have like some pretty clear imagery of, you know, like the Roman Empire and Alexander the Great, but it's not super clear. And, and I think that where I kind of landed on all of this, particularly here at the, at the back and some of those chapters that have just overwhelmed me in the past is that... Um, that's maybe not the main point. <laughs> Perhaps the main point of Daniel from the very beginning, like them starting in exile and choosing to follow God and the backs and the forths and the ups and the downs, the lion's dens and the fiery furnaces and all of these different visions, it's, it's God telling us, hey, I'm in control. There, there, and what the theme has been throughout so much of the Old Testament is there is punishment for sin. There is consequences. This exile that they're in is a huge moment in the people of Israel, but... God is in control. He has a plan, and there is hope for those who trust in God. He's going to 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 make things right. In the end, those those statues, those kingdoms, those beasts, they are going to be conquered by the one true king, by the Son of Man. And so in the midst of it, I, I don't know that I can fully or I ever will fully wrap my mind around like what Daniel chapter 10 and 11 are all about to a T, right? But I do think that I can walk away from this and go, this is a beautiful story of, of not only God's providence to Daniel and his friends in the midst of exile, but then also looking forward. And, and, and it kind of is, it's evergreen in a sense. When I say evergreen, I mean like it, it lives on for all of us. Like thousands of years later, this, this kind of speaks to us. What, what are the beasts that we're facing, right? What are, what are the, 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 the crazy things that we don't understand in our lives and are we allowing God to speak into that and say, hey, I've got you. Um, and the very last word, but you go your way and rest. You shall rise for your reward at the end of the days. I mean, good story. I'm getting a little preachy at you. That's not my goal with this series. It's just kind of like journey. But that was kind of my journey. It's like I wanted to take a little extra time in a book that I'm pretty familiar with and try to dig a little bit deeper. I found that to be really meaningful as I searched through Daniel um, it's one, it's, there's a handful of books that I've gone through where I've said, okay, when I'm done with this read-through, I want to go back and do like a deep dive, buy a book that's all about, you know, like in this case, buy a, a commentary or a, a series that's all about Daniel and really dive deep for a few weeks, not just for a few days, you know what I'm saying? So um, there's so much there. I would, I would really love to know, particularly about Daniel, if you hadn't, have you, <laughs> I know that I'm, I'm kind of, some of you out there might have some really crazy theories on Daniel. Feel free to drop those in the comments, but, but everybody out there, if you have some thoughts on Daniel, if you have some things that have challenged you or inspired you about this book, I would love to hear them personally, just because I've been reflecting um, on this book. It's been, it's been really good. I'd also love if you're on this journey with me. I know we started this back in January. There's, I mean, these videos are not like a zillion people are not watching these, but I know there's a bunch of you who are following along with me and you've been encouraging. A lot of you have been giving me feedback about where you're at in your own journey, so please um, keep leaving those comments as well. Um, I, I've really enjoyed this. I, I'll be honest with you, What I, my, my announcement is that my next video is going to be the rest of the Old Testament, which is the Minor Prophets, from Hosea through Malachi. Honestly, as I'm recording this, I haven't recorded one of these in about a week and a half because I did that trip to D.C. and everything. I'm almost done with the Old Testament. So I've read Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and Haggai. I have Zechariah and Malachi left. 
So I'm going to be reading those as Becca and I do more traveling this weekend. We have a family wedding and then hopefully getting another video out here in the next week or so where I talk, kind of do a, a buzz through all of the minor prophets and kind of highlight the things that, that jumped out to me. And then I'm going to be jumping into the New Testament and I'm on track to be done a little bit early. So I'm thinking I've got some ideas for what I'm going to do after I finish early because I'm going to keep reading all the way through the end of the year. Um, so I'll be sharing those with you as well. Anyway, that's my recap of Daniel. Uh, really interesting, a lot of fun. Again, I would love to hear from you. Thank you, as always, for watching these videos and supporting me here on the channel. If you haven't found me over there on like Instagram and Facebook already, you can find Bible Review Blog links to those things in the video description. And uh, you definitely surf around and find more videos in this series and other Bible reviews and Bible-related content here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.